My washer and dryer automations are nearly perfect, but it wasn't easy to get here. Every time I thought I had it figured out, something would slip through the cracks. But now, it's basically flawless. Like, it only notifies the person who's actually doing laundry. So yeah, it's amazing. You gotta check it out. These automations are important to me because there was a comment left on one of my videos over a year ago that still haunts me today. It was by Michael Thomas 9976 Longtime viewer, first time commenter. Read, iron that shirt. Okay, bye. My shirt was wrinkly that video, so hopefully these automations will make it so I never forget my laundry in the dryer and my shirts won't be wrinkly. So let me show you how it's set up. So this is a smart washer and dryer and I could connect this to my smart home and automate it that way and I've done that but it was unreliable for me. It would disconnect often and I need something that's gonna work every single time. I need Michael Thomas to be happy about my shirts. So I added a smart outlet to the washing machine and a vibration sensor to the dryer. So that's all I have for this. So you could use the same technique on any washer and dryer. They do not need to be smart. Let me show you how I'm automating the washing machine because it's really easy. Unlike the dryer, the washing machine doesn't use a lot of power. So you can put a smart outlet on it and monitor the power usage to know if the washing machine is running or not. So the way I'm doing it is if the power usage goes above 50 watts, and it will go well above that for my washing machine, but I just pick that as a random number to go over that threshold. If it goes over that, it will trigger an automation to turn on an input Boolean for my smart home to know that the washing machine is on. Now for the automation when the washing machine stops running is triggered when the power usage drops below eight watts for one minute. I didn't choose zero watts because sometimes the washing machine might have a light on or something for a little bit once it's finished and I don't want it to wait a long time before it finally notifies me. So once it drops below eight watts for a minute, it will turn off that input Boolean and then notify me. But that's not gonna help me with not wrinkly shirts. You know, Michael Thomas has some high demands. So the automation for the dryer, it's a little more complex, but it's also pretty simple. Years ago, when I first tried to set up an automation with a vibration sensor on the dryer, I thought I could slap on any old vibration sensor and once it stopped detecting vibration, the dryer was finished. <laughs> Only if it was that easy. I realized that lots of different vibration sensors have different sensitivities, and depending on what you put in the dryer, like how full it is, will change up the vibration. So I found that the third reality vibration sensor that I've covered recently on the main channel, that can adjust the sensitivity. And so that works really well. And I put it on max sensitivity, so it's very accurate. And of course, I'm gonna link that as well as the smart outlet that I'm using down in the description. But yeah, I didn't realize that different load sizes in the dryer affected the vibration. So to handle the different load sizes in the dryer, I had to create two different automations for this to work. So for the first automation, it's kind of what you would expect for the vibration sensor on the dryer. If it detects vibration for two minutes straight, then it will turn on an input Boolean saying that the dryer is running, but that doesn't always work if it's a smaller load because sometimes the clothes are just bouncing around a little bit more when it's smaller and the vibrations will be on for a few seconds and then off for a few seconds on for a few seconds and off so i made a second automation for this automation i created another helper and this one is a counter so it counts how many vibrations there are on the dryer to let me know if it's on or not and the way the automation works is every time that vibration is detected it triggers this automation and then it adds to the counter for the vibrations. And then it checks to see if it's above 30. And if it is, then it turns on that input Boolean that the dryer is running. So to make this all work, I just need one more automation to let me know that the dryer is finished. And to do that, I have an automation get triggered when the vibration sensor doesn't sense anything for three minutes. And the reason I chose three minutes is because sometimes there can be big gaps in between vibrations. You know, the dryer can be a little unreliable on consistency. So this has worked well for me. That way I don't have any false positives. For the actions, it resets that counter because I don't need that anymore. And then it checks to see if the input Boolean is on for the dryer to let me know that it was running. 
And if it is, it will alert my phone and then it turns off the input boolean. So that's it. There's only basically those two automations to turn it on and then one to let me know that it's finished and to alert me. But I need to know if it's running for me and not for Ali. And I don't want to bother Ali with phone notifications if I'm doing laundry. So let me show you how I have it set up. So I thought of a couple of different ways that I could do this. One was room presence detection, but there was a really big problem with that. What if me and Allie are both in here doing laundry at the same time? Like she's moving stuff to the dryer. I'm putting things in the washing machine. How would it know who's doing what? There's a lot of issues with that. And maybe you guys know of a really good solution. So if you do, let me know down in the comments. But what I ended up going with was a couple of different ways to let my smart home know that it's me doing laundry and not Allie. The first thing that I added was NFC tags to the washer and dryer. That way I can just scan my phone on the washing machine and I can turn on a specific input Boolean, letting my smart home know Reed is using the washing machine or the dryer. And that can be a little inconvenient because if I forget to scan it, and I'm walking around the house, I don't wanna to have to walk all the way back in here and turn it on. So I made it pretty easy to remember and to quickly turn on. So what I'm doing is displaying on all the dashboards if the washer or dryer is running, and it will say if it's read or not. And that way I can quickly look at it and say, oh, I forgot to scan my NFC tag, and I can just click on it and quickly turn it on. And the way that I set it up is pretty cool. Instead of using the entity of the input Boolean for the washer or dryer, I'm using the entity of the read washing machine input Boolean. So if I did forget to scan it, I can just walk up to the dashboard, click on it, quickly switch it over to myself, and that way I don't forget and I don't have to go back into the laundry room and scan the NFC tag. And the way the automation works is it checks to see if the input Boolean for me is turned on, and if it is, it'll just notify my phone. If it's off, it'll just notify Allie's. And that way we're not getting tons of notifications and it's so much nicer. So yeah, these automations work extremely well and hopefully Michael Thomas doesn't think my shirt is too wrinkly anymore. And I'm gonna try to post here on the second channel more. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. Thanks for watching.